Hi there, thanks for clicking on this video. So today is your first time on the channel. Please do want to like, subscribe and share. By this way, you motivate me to provide helpful content like this that can help you to become better in your academics. So without further ado, let's jump to uh, the discussion for today. So in our previous lessons, we have learned about other measures of dispersion like Shabby Chef Theorem and other measures. So today we consider by looking at what skewness of a set of data. So that leads us to the definition of a skewness of a data. So when we talk about skewness of a data, skewness has to do with what the measurement of distortion of a symmetrical or asymmetrical distribution in a set of data. It's a measurement of this distortion of a symmetrical or asymmetrical distribution in a set of what, data. So for us to illustrate skewness, skewness is always illustrated by using what we call a bell-shaped curve. So for us to illustrate skewness, we use what we call a bell-shaped word curve. It's like a normal bell that we know. So I define symmetrical distribution. Symmetrical is also known as a normal distribution. In this kind of distribution, data set is being spread evenly. The data set is being spread what evenly. But when it comes to asymmetry, that is where we have the data set being almost 80-90% of the data is being spread towards to one particular direction. Any direction can be either to the left or to the right of what uh, the graph that you represent this set of data on. And this is what we call a skewness of a data, being asymmetrical or asymmetrical. So if a set of data, when represented by skewness, is symmetrical, then we say that the skewness of such data is equal to what? Zero, right? But if a set of data is being represented in terms of their spread by a symmetrical distribution, then we will say that such skewness can be skewed to either a positive or skewed to either what a negative. So by positive, we have what we call a right distribution of skewness. By negative, we mean where data has been skewed towards the left side of what uh, the distribution, right? So that is the whole issue about skewness of a data. So that also lead us to what we call the types of what skewness. So generally, as I said, we illustrate skewness of a data by using what we call a bell shape, something like this, like a normal bell that you know, right? So this is what we use to illustrate what skewness of a data. So that leads us to what we call the types of skewness. So what are the various types of skewness? So types, types of skewness. So generally, we have three types of skewness. So we have what a symmetrical distribution of skewness. Then we have what positive, positive or right skewness. And then we also have the negative or left skewness left what skewness left skewness right so these are the types of skewness that we have when it comes to representing data in a form of a bell shape so generically symmetrical distribution is like a normal word uh normal distribution so in that way around the data is even spread what evenly so when you have a symmetrical distribution it looks like this so let's say we have our set of graph like this. So for a symmetrical distribution, we have something like this. So this is what we call what a symmetrical distribution. So with this set of data, and based on this discussion too, we are going to make emphasis on the three measures of central tendency, which are the mode, the median, and then the mean. So when you represent a set of data using these parameters, for measures of central tendency as a skewness way of deciding the spread of data, we say that for symmetrical distribution, the skewness is called zero. That means that the mode, that means that the mode, that means that the mode, the median, and the mean are all equal to each other. So we have what the mode being equal to what the mean, and we have the median being equal to what the mean so that's what we are saying so we have what mode equal to what median 
and that is also equal to what? Mean. And skewness for set data is equal to what? Zero. That is a symmetrical what? Distribution. But when it comes to a positive or right skewness of a data, this is how it also looks like. You have your graph like this. To represent a positive skewness of a data, you are going to have majority of the data being skewed to what? To the right side of what? Your graph or presentation, how you present it. So it's going to be like something like this. So that means that you're going to have a long tail, right? Heading towards to the positive side of the uh, presentation for the graph. So we're going to have something like this. Something like this. This is what we call what? A positive or rightly skewed what? Distribution. So here, it means that, it means that here, it means that you are going to have your always, the mode is always the highest or, or the most common value that okay in a set of data. So you're going to have your mode here. So you're going to have your mode like this. So it's just going to be your mode. Okay. This is going to be your median, always the middle value, right? So median. And lastly, you have your mean somewhere like this. So this is your mean. So that should tell you that here, when it comes to a positive skill distribution, the mode is actually what? So mode. The mode is actually what? Uh, less than that of what? The median. And the median is also less than what? The mean. So in a positively or right skewed distribution of a set of data, the mean is the highest set of what? Value. So the mean is greater than the median and the median is greater than what? The mode. So you can also reverse like this. So we have what? The mean. You have the mean being greater than what? The median. And also being greater than what the mode. So the mode becomes what the lowest value in terms of what the spread because it has been skewed towards toward the right hand side of a set of what data. So here you see that the long tail for the policy skew is very what the tail for the policy skew is very what long. But when it comes to the left side, it's very what short. It's what we call a right what distribution, a right what distribution because the short the short tail tells you that this is what a positively was skewed what distribution and these are most at times what are investors use to determine the returns of a, an asset that they invest right so for example if they want to know how much returns an asset will use based on this data they will know that okay then this asset will have high returns because being skewed to the positive side high returns and what few what losses because of the left which is very what small in terms of the tail that is uh, a positively skewed word, distribution. But when it comes to a negatively skewed distribution, that is where we have what majority or 80% or 90% of data also being skewed to the left side of the distribution. So this is why we're going to have such kind of data. So we have our line here. So by that way, we're going to have something like this, right? That, so here is our mode. This is our uh, median and that is our uh, mean so this also shows what we call a negatively skewed or left skewed distribution of a set of data here you can clearly see that the tail of what a negative skew is very long and then to the right side is very what short this shows what a negatively skewed what distribution so if you're an investor and you're investing using this set of data in terms of the spread that should inform you that here you are going to make what high losses and what few words retains right so that is why it should inform you as an investor in an asset for example assets if you invest in securities these are, these are the things that you need to know before investing right so this is what we call a negatively what skewed so in a negative skewed distribution we have the mode we have the mode we have the mode being greater than what the median and the median being greater than what the mean so that's what we call a negatively skewed what distribution, a negatively skewed distribution. Or in other words, the mean is less than what the median, and the median is less than what the mode. So in a negatively skewed distribution, mode has the highest value, but in a positively skewed distribution, mean has what the highest what value.
but median always remain at the middle side of whether it's a positive or negative right and if it's also a sinometrical then that is how it happens so sinometrical to means that the mode the median and the mean are all equal so that's why we need to understand when it comes to what skewness of a set of what data so when a set of data is asymmetrical that means that such distribution varies from the normal distribution for which we know is what symmetrical here like this where the mode the median and the mean are all, all what equal so this is what we need to understand when it comes to what skewness of what a data so there was also uh, a mathematician who was able to find a limitation when it comes to a skewness of a data he made us aware that skewness uh, actually informed us about what the out layer of what the out layer of what the spread of data but it doesn't give us any specific number of how data is being spread whether to the positive side or whether to the negative side or cinematical and that is what he finds out that then there should be a way for us to calculate a value that can represent a skewness whether it's cinematical or asymmetrical or if it's asymmetrical that's, that's where we have if it's asymmetrical that's where we have what the negative skew distribution of skewness of a distribution then we have what uh, positive skewness of what distribution but if cinematrical means that we have what a normal distribution the mode the median and the mean are all what, equal so this uh, mathematician or statistician find out that this skewness actually give us what the outlier of what is but doesn't give us a specific what value and that is why you find out to be a limitation and you propose a formula to find what the value of a skewness and we call that formula as what the coefficient of what skewness we call that as the coefficient of so in determining the coefficient of a skewness we have two formulas that these are statistician actually but the name of this mathematician or statistician is called Carl Pearson that is the name of what this are uh, statistician he believes that for skewness of a data it doesn't actually give us what a numerical value so he was able to propose two formulas that will help us to find the coefficient or numerical value for a skewness of what a data so one we have two formulas for Carl Pearson and one we have what so one we have skewness one which says that it should be equal to what x the x here mean what x by here mean the mean minus what the mode okay minus the mode and then divide by what your standard deviation which is what the x that was the first formula and the second formula that you proposed was also that we have what three multiplying what the mean minus what the median so i use mid all right and then divide by what standard deviation these two formulas was what Carl Pearson find out to be a limitation for us to provide what a numerical value for skewness of a data. So the first coefficient formula is used where we have a strong mode in a set of data, where we have a strong mode in a set of data. That's where we use what the first formula, which is X bar minus mode over what standard deviation. But the second formula is used where the mode is very weak or there is what multiples of what mode or carrying a set of data and in that way we're not going to use the first formula we're going to use what the second formula to calculate what the coefficient of what skewness all right so that is what Carl Pearson actually uh actually came out as a formula to calculate what the value of a skewness called coefficient of what skewness so let's take note of the two formulas as we move along so that is what we need to understand going for when it comes to what skewness.